Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, kunichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jeb Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Please be sure to connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids, at Jedly Magic on Twitter, at reading with your kids on Instagram. Our guest today is Vicki Fang. She's here to talk about Lyle and the bots in Ventapet. We are really excited to have Vicki on for another STEM-related episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. And we are so excited to let you know that we have a special series of episodes coming to you in May. We are calling the series Solve It. And I am putting this together with our buddy, our dean of all things STEM and STEAM, Jennifer Swanson. You are not going to believe the guests that we have on this show. It's incredible. Solve It is a great series of podcasts that, is, that are going to give kids and families a peek into the real world of scientists, engineers, and experts as they solve problems in their jobs using curiosity, critical thinking, and creativity. And like I said, this is a podcast for kids and families. A great podcast for kids and parents to listen to together. Check it out. It's coming to you May 19th here on the Reading With Your Kids po podcast. It's called Solve It. Joining us on the line right now from Silicon Valley in California. She is the author of not one, but two books debuting on the same day. Talk about a party. Please welcome to the show the author of Layla and the Bots and also the author of Inventipet. Here's Vicki Fang. Vicki, how are you? I am so good. Thank you, Jed. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. We are really excited. We love having guests on um, that, that are talking about STEM and STEAM books. And I forgot to mention that Vicky is part of the STEAM 2020 team. And we're really excited about that. We've had so many great authors on that are part of that group. So uh, I know this is going to be a fascinating conversation. Which book do you want to start with? Uh, Layla and the Bots or Inventapet? Uh, let's start with Layla and the Bots. All right. Layla, tell us all about this <laughs> book. <laughs> and I promise I'll stop singing. It's perfect. We need a theme song, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so Layla and the Bots, I'm guessing uh, we're talking robotics? Yes, we are. So I used to be a designer at Google, and I worked on many things, including robots for kids, um, sort of DIY cardboard robots. And so Layla and the Bots is sort of my ode to product design. So Layla and her band of bots, she is a rock star and inventor. Uh, they travel around performing shows, and they solve problems for people that they run into, by designing and inventing new things. So the first book is called Happy Paws, and they have to save their local amusement park, which means they end up redesigning the park for dogs. So they design an entire amusement park for dogs, uh, and it goes through the whole thing, sort of research, design, building, iteration, and the whole process of building a technology product. So very cool. You know, I remember being young and, and loving going to an amusement parks. It never occurred to me what went on, you know, kind of, you know, designing the roller coaster. How, you know, what, what, what did you need to do to make sure that, uh, you know, people didn't go flying off it, 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 into the sky as they were traveling around this roller coaster <laughs> at 60 miles an hour? And yeah. as I'm getting older, I think it, it really is fascinating. And I think I would have been fascinated by it as a kid, too. Yeah. I mean, I think so. I've never actually designed an amusement park ride, but I have designed sort of interactive experiences, sort of buildings that play music when you interact with them, things like that. So different types of experiences that people have to interact with. And there is there's a whole process that you have to go through to sort of make sure it's safe and make sure people are having fun and make sure they interact in the way that you think they're going to. So Layla and the bots do sort of go through that whole thing. They do have to go through a safety inspection. That's part of the first story. <laughs> and so 
yeah, I mean, I think it's really fun and magical, the types of things that you can build with technology. And that's really what I wanted to put into the story to get kids excited about what they can do, the types of things they could build, the types of crazy ideas they could come up with. So uh, I hope that it resonates and that kids find some exciting inspiration from the stories. You know, I have to, I have to be honest with you. I was one of those, those knucklehead guys in, in, in school uh, that, you know, looked at, <laughs> looked at science kids like, oh, this nerdy and, you know, and oh, this yep. just, you know, it's like protractors and, and, you know, scientific calculators. I don't think they had them when I was a kid, but you know, <laughs> you're just doing all this scientific stuff and oh, it's so boring. There's no creativity there at all. In reality, there's a lot of creativity in science, technology, engineering, and math. Oh, my gosh, I know. And that's why I love the whole movement towards STEAM. And I know that you and Jennifer Swanson talked about that on your episode. Um, but I really, for me, I was sort of the nerdy math kid, right? I, I was super good at math and that kind of stuff. But I also was the art kid. I was the theater kid. So actually, I... I literally majored in math and theater when I was in college. And then when I went on to grad school and other things, I wanted to make experiences. The point was to create art. And so I became a digital artist for a while and I built installations. And I just, for me, technology is another medium. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would like kids to see, that it's a tool that they can build with. I love that. Talk about uh, turning turning the world on its head. Looking at technology as a, a, another medium. That's yeah. It, it it really is true. But that's I, I never thought of it like that. Oh well, hopefully now you will, and <laughs> hopefully after reading the book, some kids will. Um, yeah, and I mean, for me as a designer, that's sort of you know everything to me, I sort of look at like that. So for me coming from product design and now coming into writing, I consider writing to be a medium. You know, there's something that I'm trying to convey to someone, some experience that I'm trying to give them. And writing happens to be, you know, the story happens to be the method by which I'm delivering that experience. But mm -hmm. for me as a designer, that could be any type of medium. And technology is an amazing one because Sensors and actuators are cool and <laughs> they do amazing things. I mean, you think about like wireless technology, that is so magical. Like, <laughs> can you believe that works? It's so cool. <laughs> oh, I agree. I am, I am with you. You know, I do educational magic shows and mm -hmm. I, I go into a school and, uh, you know, kids, I'll take out my, my little, props and and uh, I'll use this little thing to make a hanky disappear. I'll put it into my hand, open up my hand, it's gone. And kids sit there going, wow, that's magic. That's crazy. And then I'll say to them, reach inside your pocket. Pull out that rectangular thing that's in your pocket. That's magic. You can use that thing to send a <laughs> message to anywhere in the world in a second. And you can send video. Right. And, you know, and that's that to me is magic. It boggles my mind. Yeah. It's so cool the things that you can do. And even you think about Harry Potter and the types of things that they do in Harry Potter, a lot of those things you can start to do now with technology. And it's crazy, you know, like newspapers with moving images. I mean, really, we have that, <laughs> you know, it may not be in the form of uh, the way it was presented in Harry Potter, but that experience we have where you can go online and watch videos and see, you know, moving images of people whenever you want. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think, you know, technology is such a fun medium to play with uh and there's so many possibilities yeah it really is it really is true and now I, i'm old enough i remember being being a kid when there was only three channels on tv and uh, none of them were in color especially in my house and <laughs> I, I remember and i was fascinated with with sci-fi and i look back at those some of those shows right now even the original star trek series and i'm like we get better stuff than they have in the enterprise <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> yeah. And that's something actually, so I used to work in a lab um, before I was at Google, I worked at Intel in an experience lab and we had some folks there who were called futurists. It was a very strange lab, but um, one of our futurists 
uh, Brian David Johnson, who also happens to be a writer, he writes sci-fi. And one of his ideas is that, you know, sci-fi is kind of imagining the future. And it's not so much, you know, it's make-believe, but it's also sort of forming the way that we um, develop and grow and and can think about how all these systems interact. So really, like, all of that imagining helps shape where we go with technology, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's that was a side. <laughs> no, but but I was just listening to a uh, a podcast with a former astronaut who's now working at SpaceX, and one of the things he was saying is we need to imagine it before we can create it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is what uh, I, I'm. I'm just thrilled. Layla in the bots is you know that that's definitely has to be a a must read for folks. And, and what age group is Layla in the bots written for? It's for kindergarten through second grade. Um, that's the recommended sort of reading age. So mm-hmm. I know kids sort of vary in, in the ages in terms of uh, their reading level, but it's fully illustrated. Um, and it's sort of an early, early chapter book. Yeah, cool. Cool. I, you know, I, I've mentioned this on, on a couple of shows as a, I, I, I love reading science. I love reading kids' books about science because. You know, I, I don't want to pick up a college book about robotics because it'll go right over my head. I won't understand a thing about it. <laughs> but if I'm reading, yeah. if I'm reading a, you know, book that was written for, uh, second graders, I have a chance of maybe being able to digest some of that. And, you know, if it's something that interests me, I can dig a little bit deeper. Yeah. And there's something too, I think, about, um, narrative stories that have those elements because there are going to be a lot of kids who don't, um, who are going to engage better if there's a character that they can relate to. They're going to engage in the story and they'll read it again and again and then they'll start to absorb these concepts that maybe they wouldn't have normally been drawn to. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited about that too. Yeah. Well, I'm excited right now to learn uh, about Inventapet. Um, yes. I've, I've, my, my, my trusty doggy, Augie, is here in the studio watching my back. So uh, we're both interested to find out what Inventapet's all about. Yes. So Inventapet is my picture book debut, and it's about a girl who discovers a mysterious machine in her living room. And she has to figure out the perfect formula for her perfect pet. So um, it has a lot of ideas about, you know, problem solving, inputs, outputs, functions, all of those things. But really, the heart of the story is about how the extraordinary can be found all around us. So it's her search for the extraordinary through this machine. Very cool. You know, I, I'm sitting here. We've just been talking for 10 or 15 minutes. It seems like you've found lots of extraordinary all around you in your life. It's true. I, <laughs> I, my husband jokes because I feel like I'm constantly figuring out what I'm going to be when I grow up. And, uh, you know, he's like, you know, you're done with that. <laughs> he's like, you know, you're, you're grown up now, <laughs> but I'm always interested in exploring. So, um, you know, this writing adventure has been really amazing for me. I started writing three and a half years ago now. I have seven STEM books coming out in the next two years. Um, and that's just sort of how I have lived my life. So I, you know, I just find something that I'm excited about and I'm interested about and I dive in. So I really do think that uh, sometimes people ask me, you know, what's what's your advice to to young designers or young people who want to follow? And I just say, you know, do the stuff that you want to do, because that's going to open doors to more stuff that you want to do. If you do the thing that you think you should do that you hate, it's going to lead to more of that. So don't do that. (laughs) So, you know, I think just opening the doors to things that you're interested in uh, has served me well. So luckily, I guess sometimes that cannot work out as well. (laughs) But I think if you're really passionate about something, you're going to find a way. And, and, and I agree with you. I, you know, my, my wife is constantly joking about me, you know, I having, I I don't know what, what number of jobs I've had in my lifetime. And she's always, they're, they're, 
uh, we've been married now for 30 years, and every once in a while I goes, yeah, I remember working at this. And she goes, another job? I'm just finding out about <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. She's still finding out. Still finding out stuff about me. Most of it's good and doesn't get me into trouble, which is good. But, <laughs> you know, one of the things you, you've said, you know, kind of go for the things that you love and that interest you and fascinate you. But that takes a certain amount of courage. So it's, it's great advice, and, and I absolutely agree with you. But where do you find the courage to, to actually do that? Well, I think this is a tricky thing, too, because it also comes from a place of privilege. So uh -huh. I do need to caveat that a little bit, uh -huh. um, because I do think I've always had enough of a backup. So right now, you know, I am I did work at Google for years and years, and I, you know, made money there. But mm -hmm. the only reason I'm able to take a step into writing is because my husband is supportive of that situation. So I happen to be in a situation where I can do that. So there's always some practicality involved. I can't just like go running off and do whatever I want to do mm -hmm. when I want to do it. Um, there are sort of practical considerations. And then in terms of courage, uh, I, I think it's just, I, I, I don't know where, where that comes from, I guess I've, I've embarrassed myself plenty of times too. I mean, maybe that's part of it is I just don't think that much about it before I do it. Um, yeah. Well, I remember in high school, there was, um, they asked somebody to, they asked me if I would come up and do the school assembly, uh, because they didn't have anyone to run the school assembly. So I called all of my friends at six in the morning and convinced them to get up on stage with me and sing a song. And it was the most mortifying and embarrassing thing. And I <laughs> probably shouldn't have done it, but I just was like, I want to try that. Let's do it. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, there, there is, you know, um, people my age, we, we joke a lot about, you know, we've reached the point in our lives where we really don't care what people think about it. Uh, <laughs> and there's a lot of advantage to that. And I think there's a lot of advantage, to, uh, you know, it, it, seriously, there's a, there's a lot of advantage to people at any age to be be willing to, to take chances and not worry about what folks think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, yeah. go ahead, go expand on that. <laughs> I was going to say, or to deal with the consequences when you do you find out what they think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I would be, uh, I, I, I can't, I can't let you go without asking you what it was like working at Google. And if you signed an NDA, I understand, but I, I'm just, <laughs> with this, Google is just, just this thing, this, this, global thing and it is so big and it's so encompassing and you hear all these stories about uh well you know there's there's uh you know swinging trapeze instead of desks and you know <laughs> all this other kind <laughs> of stuff um uh, what was it like for you at google uh working at google is amazing it is really unlike of any other place um just the type of people that i think um, join that company. I, so I live in Mountain View, uh, where Google is. And I was thinking about it driving around this morning because, you know, we have the self-driving cars that are being tested. So you drive around and you see these self-driving cars everywhere. And then people are going to work on unicycles and electric scooters. You know, I mean, it's just wacky, which I love. It's just you've got quirky minds who all want to do great things. Um, and so that's amazing. Like it's an energy that is hard to find elsewhere. And so, um, it's amazing. Google is getting bigger and bigger. So it is, you know, it's still a big company and it comes with all the stuff that comes with big company. But, mm -hmm. uh, the, the fun that I've had inventing things with people at Google has been amazing. And that is where, you know, I was working on, um, technology for kids. So I did a lot of the voice stuff for kids. So, um, you know, when you talk to the Google assistant and you want to talk to Mickey Mouse or, um, you want to play a game, I, I worked on a lot of that stuff. I worked on, like I said, the cardboard robots for kids where we were doing DIY robots. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's a ton of fun. Everyone I, should go work there. <laughs> I bet. I bet. And, 
I'm 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 envisioning you know you know the, the unicycles going to work and the uh, the the autonomous cars. I, th- there are some communities that, that I've driven into in my time traveling around the country doing my my um, educational magic shows, and I remembered driving into some country c- c- communities with my um, v- almost invisible gray minivan with Massachusetts uh, license plates on it, and people would just stop the whole community, just stop and stare as I drove by. I can't imagine their reaction if they saw a, an anonymous, uh, autonomous car or someone on a unicycle driving by. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, it's it's beautiful out here, and it's it's a fun place to work. Um, yeah, that's great. Now, you mentioned that Layla in the Bots is a series, uh, and that you have these other um, books that are coming out. I, I guess I, I, I should ask you, what's it feel like having your first two books come out on the same day? Oh, I'm so excited. I have no idea what to expect <laughs> because I've never done this before. So I know these books are coming out. Um, I'm having a launch party and it's going to be for both books at once. Um, and it's interesting also, I think, to be able to see the difference between the two. I mean, one's a picture book and one's a chapter book, but sort of like, how how are people going to receive them? And then, you know, Layla and the Bots being with Scholastic and sort of being a series, it's sort of, you know, it's going to run over the next two years, um, whereas Inventive has, you know, one time drop and then see how it does. Um, but it's so exciting. And I'm just so pleased to be able to bring um, the STEM perspective, the STEAM perspective out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's you've certainly you, you're certainly presenting STEAM and STEM as fun, and uh, I, I think that's you, we we've done that, but not with the in, in energy and enthusiasm um, that that you bring to the subject. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. What? Oh, good. Well, you, you worked at Google. You've done design. You you've written books. What's the next, what's, what's the next chapter in your life that you envision? Uh, this is going to be the chapter for a while. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be writing for a while. I don't know after that. Uh, but yeah, I plan to be writing books for a long time and I hope that I, uh, get to. Well, that's wonderful. Well, if you're planning on writing books for a long time, people are going to want to know where they can connect with you online so they don't miss any of the books as they come out. So tell us where we can connect with you. Absolutely. So I am online. My website is vickifang.com, and I'm on Twitter. My Twitter handle is fangness, which is F-A-N-G-M-O-U-S. And my Instagram is Fangmus Books, F-A-N-G-M-O-U-S Books. Has to be one of my favorite Twitter handles, (laughs) Fangmus. I love that. It's my old, yeah, it's my old gamer tag from like when I was in college, but it's stuck. Yeah, you know, that's incredible. Uh, I'm just going to end on this. One of the things that blows me away about the current time that we're living in is that there are professional gamers. And that people oh, are going, I know. people are going into stadiums to watch other people play video games. I know it's so wild. <laughs> it's so cool, though. I mean, I love that video games are an art form and a sport. Like here we are. <laughs> and and you know, I've I, you know when, when my son, who's a you know a, a, a gamer on a very very you know um, low level uh, in terms of his interest, but. Uh, when he started telling me about, you know, people and filling arenas and, and gaming and, and all that kind of stuff, I thought, that's so silly. That's ridiculous. But then, you know, you think about what's going on with CTE and people just, you know, experiencing all these really horrific physical and mental injuries that maybe it makes sense that we go and we watch little protons beat each other up instead of watching <laughs> real people do it. Yeah. The one that gets me more is the watching the videos of people playing games. <laughs> but, you know, I guess it's the same thing. There's a level of skill involved that I don't understand because I don't game as much now. But I feel like, you know, 
my kids are too young to play, but eventually I'm sure they will be watching that stuff too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't want to mention the videos of watching people play because I don't get that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's strange. <laughs> We've had such a blast speaking to the author of Layla in the Bots and also the author of Inventipet, Vicky Fang. Vicky, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Laurie smollett Kutsera. She's going to be talking about a book that is near and dear to my heart, Misadventures of the Magician's Son. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. If you are the author of a great children's book, you may be frustrated right now. That's right. You know, as, as an author of a children's book, You are the person most responsible for getting the word out about your book. That means marketing your book. That means going out to libraries, to book signings, to do school appearances. And that ain't happening right now. And it's not happening in the very near future. We have a solution, something that could help you, something that can help your book stand out from the crowd of books that are published every single day, something that you can put on your website to let parents know that they should check out your book. It's the Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read Program. If our panel of readers love your book and give it a four or five out of five star rating, it becomes a Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. And with that status comes a whole lot of great tools that can help your book stand out. Check it out today. Go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Author Services button at the top of the page. We will let you know everything you know need to know about this great program. We want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to thank Vicki Fang. Be sure to check out her books. I also want to thank my incredible team, starting with my amazing producer, Fatima Khan. I want to thank my awesome author, Ambassador Peggy Cotto. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. But most of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us today. I want to thank you for taking the time to suddenly become your child's teacher. I want to thank you for taking the time to help make this world a better place. And and, and you do that every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.